Um, and David is calling us. Hello, David. Uh, good Hello. morning, Rod. Good morning, good Dr. David. Dr. Welcome to the show. Uh, good day, Dr. Call. Uh, I used to live in Sydney for a number of years. Um, I was there at the time when concern was being expressed about the future of the Barrier Reef. I can't remember, you know, it was under severe duress. I can't remember that the element that was attacking the coral. Um, but it, what's the current situation? You know, I'm uh, environmentally orientated, and I'd just like you to give me an update. Is it still under duress, or has the, uh, the problem been cured or controlled? It's worse than ever, and yeah. we've had a change really? of federal government in Australia. And so yeah. laws, rules have been passed that allow the dumping of millions of tonnes of sediment inside the Great Reef, Great Barrier Reef National Park. And That's according cool. to an article in The New Scientist, the government officials say that this will make the reef better, not worse. Now, just well, think about coral. Have got any evidence, Carl, to that effect, you know? Huge evidence looking at where sediments have been dumped near coral reefs and how it travels tens or even hundreds of kilometres and then kills the little polyps. So I let me just talk the about... the element that was causing the problem was came from the sea itself, but I didn't realise it was uh, put in situ by, by the human race, you know. Okay, well, yeah. let, me, let me give you an update on the coral reef, right? So in general, coral reefs cover less than one-tenth of one percent of the world's oceans but support 25% of all the creatures that live in the oceans. Between 1985 and 2012, that's quite recent, the coral, the Great Barrier Reef has lost half of its coral. It's going to lose another 25% at the current rate by the year 2022. Now, the Great Barrier Reef stretches at 2,500 kilometres off the coast of Queensland, about 3,000 individual reefs and some 900 islands. It was built by a creature called, an animal called a coral polyp. Now, this animal doesn't have legs and move around, but rather this tiny animal, a few millimetres in diameter and a few centimetres long, sits on a rock or on back of previous coral and then excretes a carbonate exoskeleton. And in that way, they're glued to what's ever below them. And at the other end, they have a bunch of tentacles. But they cannot do, you know, to grab the food and eat it. But they cannot survive by themselves. They live in a very cosy, mutually beneficial relationship with an algae, an algae called zooxanthella, or more commonly symbiodium. the The relationship is so close that these guys live inside the body of the host coral polyp. The polyps give the little uh, zooxanthella carbon dioxide and ammonium. And in return, the zooxanthella or symbiodium give them, the polyps, carbohydrates and nutrients. And they provide 95%, over 95% of the metabolic needs of the coral polyps. They're quite weird. They've got 100 times more DNA than we have. We don't know why. They do photosynthesis, by, but by a completely different process from all other living organisms. And when the coral is under stress, for example, uh, high temperatures, uh, pollutants in the water, they will expel their essential symbiotic partners. You think, hang on, this is you're going to die. But in the short term, not having to feed them keeps them alive. They can go hungry for a few days. If after a few days they can't take up the symbiodinium again, they die. So this is called coral bleaching because these creatures give them their colour. So over losing that half of its coral in the 27 years that have gone past, 10% due to coral bleaching, about 48% due to storm damage, 42% due to the infamous crown of thorns. And all of these are related to how we've changed the world and the temperature of the oceans and the environment along the Great Barrier Reef. The situation we're looking at now is that the Great Barrier Reef is on its way to becoming the average, or God help me, the mediocre Barrier Reef. The problem is not just the, what we're doing to the Great Barrier Reef, but the characteristics of the coral polyp. It has got exactly the wrong characteristics to deal with a rapidly changing environment. It has a long life cycle, not a short one. It often redu reproduces asexually. And the trouble is, if it reproduces asexually, the babies are the same as the parents, and they can't survive if the same insult exists in the environment. And so in sexual reproduction, they're 
um, the babies are different from the parents. So things are dire, but the federal government is allowing increased dumping of sediments inside the Great Barrier Reef at the moment. Who knows what will happen next year, in the next few months. They may change their mind, we don't know.